Hey folks, today I'd like to talk to you about the BioOrb Air 60. Uh, Awase was kind enough to send me one of these to try out and, uh, and use. And it was really nice of them because I don't typically build terrariums. I've done a lot in the past couple of years. In fact, I, I've kind of, I was inspired to learn more about it because I specifically wanted this product so bad. And I was really, really excited that they sent it to me. Uh, this is a fairly expensive product, especially for what it is. We'll get into some of the pros and cons uh, towards the end of the video. But in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, setting this up and my experience with that. And we'll talk about a little bit about what I chose to put in here and we'll get some initial thoughts. It's much too soon in the process. It's only been a few weeks uh, since I set this up. So it's much too soon in the process to actually give it a full review. Uh, my experience so far is that I think it's great. And especially as a beginner, uh, I guess for the most part, I mean, I grow a lot of plants in this house with aquariums and stuff, but yeah, I think as a beginner, I, I've it's been really easy. Uh, to kind of, with a few adjustments anyway, it's been really easy to kind of get going with this. We'll get into that in just a minute. Before we go any further, I'd like to say thank you. Before we go any further, I'd like to say a big thank you to all my Patreons, past, present, and future. Uh, you paid for the plants in this tank. Uh, all the plants that I bought, uh, I cashed out my PayPal, and I went and I got all these plants, kind of all, almost all at once, and then a few off Etsy too. So, so you folks are the reason that I, I had a lot of great plants to put in here, and I appreciate it. Thank you. So right after I did my kind of initial thoughts and pulling this out of a box uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went ahead and, and set up uh, the parts that it came with. I put them together and got it ready for, uh, for scaping. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, so what we have here is a false bottom. This is a tray that's gonna kind of provide a little bit of area for the water to linger in in the bottom of the terrarium. And you'll notice there's an oval hole here. You wanna match it up with your capillary mat. Now they call it capillary mat because these little, uh, these little tabs here, they don't just hold it down. They're actually gonna be wicks that are gonna sit down into the water. And that water is gonna make its way up these little wicks and keep that mat nice and moist and have a nice moist uh, uh, bottom for this terrarium, which is gonna keep it uh, keep those plants watered for you for a long period of time. So you'll notice I, I kind of slid it there. That lid will come off. Uh, it will fit inside there by doubling it over, but that lid will easily kind of screw off the top. Uh, last thing you wanna do with the false bottom there is cap it with that little rubber cap. This is how the Misty machine plugs in, and just so you know, there's a little lid there so you can refill it whenever you want. I would go ahead and leave that unplugged for now. On the back, you'll notice that this has a vent. This is a vent that enables that glass to stay nice and clear, and it's got a little filter. Uh, this air filter just pops right in the top, and then you've got a little plastic cover that snaps into place that kind of keeps, uh, keeps that in place. It's a really, really quiet vent. I really enjoy it. And it makes looking at the terrarium so much easier because it keeps the glass clear. So when I initially got this thing, I had these uh, had this grand vision for aquascaping it and a kind of a neat idea. It's like, hey, instead of just doing it indoors like you always see, I maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll go outside and I'll set it up. Uh, I'll set it up in the yard. I'll kind of go out to nature and I'll just kind of scape it out there. One thing that gives you is a really cool drone shot. Uh, the other thing it gives you is a lot of heat. <laughs> it was really hot and kind of miserable to work out there. All right, so this might be a little bit hard to see because of the way the sun is. I'm going to tilt it like that. So in here, I have some mix. This is a, a little bit of that Josh's Frog stuff that I had left over from the vision cages that I built. And also uh, some of that... Uh, tropical mix that Serpe Design uh, talks about on his videos when he makes uh, a mixture. I basically just took that recipe and I've been using that too. It works great. Uh, and here are a variety of different plants. I do have to remove some of these from the pots and kind of clean off the roots and stuff, but I've had them sitting in here kind of just to keep them, um, just to keep them good. I got these have little wicks on them and the wicks going down into some water down there. So this has kept them alive while I uh, while I get ready to build this thing. And I'm outside here. I'm just out here in my neighborhood. 
And uh, so there probably won't be a lot of sound because uh, any minute now someone's going to start mowing the lawn. But I thought this would be a little less messy than doing it in the house. And um, yeah, maybe a little bit more interesting too. So we're just going to build it right out here. And then we'll take it indoors at the end and see how it does. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to break it off into here. Get it wet and mix it up and make some mud. And then we'll go, to go ahead and put our base layer in. Got some water straight out of my RO system. Now I've got this, this is nice and moist. It's very moist, it's not wet, but it's very damp. Very damp and moist and I think we're ready to begin. All right, our next ingredient is gonna be some activated carbon. And this is just gonna go on the base layer here. You will not be able to see it most likely because of the sun. I'm just gonna take it, add it in right here. Now we move on to the substrate. And the reason I'm doing this outside, other than getting to listen to that cool dog, just bark his ass off. This mixture has a lot of stuff in it. Sphagnum moss, orchid bark, special orchid uh, oriented potting soil. And I'm tempted just to like pour this in. So with the hardscape, what I was wanting to do is do some different shapes, uh, especially with the rocks and stuff. And then with the wood to provide some kind of jagged, hard uh, hard areas that uh, the orchids can maybe work their way up or I could use to kind of anchor the different plants and stuff. And uh, just kind of be a kind of a structure for them to grow into. There are a lot of things that I used for hardscape with this that I probably, if I'd known that the acrylic was quite so fragile, like I've had aquariums for years and, and acrylic aquariums and stuff, but this uh, this acrylic is very fragile. I, I I accidentally let the camera slip a little bit and it hit the front of the terrarium and it's got a permanent mark on it. Now it's not bad and stuff, but you gotta you've got to be especially. I, I think feel like you've got to be really careful. Uh, not scraping this up and things like maybe maybe skipping the sand uh, and, and skipping the scrapey scrapey wood that I decided to put in here would probably be better. Now I managed to get my hardscape in there and the rocks and the hardscape in there and without uh, any issues and uh, I ended up using quite a lot of substrate uh, quite a lot of substrate in there and so I worked in all the different types of plants that I wanted to use and I kind of went I went with a bunch of different kind of colors and textures Unfortunately, um, I'm not a houseplant aficionado. I'm not particularly great with, with ter terrestrial plants at all, but I'm learning. So I kind of picked up a bunch of plants with different leaf types and shapes, and I just added them in, hoping that I, maybe if I make a mistake, I could go and like pull it out and reset later. But eventually I went on to add pillow moss. Uh, pillow moss is a, is a really nice, uh, way to kind of provide this kind of gap on the side. You, of course you don't want your plants to be like right up to the glass. You want a little bit of space between them. So uh, putting a little pillow moss there kind of made a nice little ring around the edge of it here. It kind of gives it a, this border to this sort of imaginary uh, border around the side. I wanted the terrarium to be bioactive. So I've added springtails and isopods. I chose uh, this funky pink variation of springtails. Uh, they didn't look pink to me, but I guess they're supposed to be pink if maybe you get a macro lens. And I got some dairy cow isopods, which I thought were uh, very attractive and interesting isopods. So I've, I've included them in there. I saw them for a few minutes after I initially put them in there, and then they all kind of just disappeared into the substrate. And I'm hoping that they're in there reproducing, so I'll see them more and more often. 
The BioOrb Air has a number of features and I'd like to tell you about a few of them now. I guess well, starting with the top, we have this lid and the lid has some technology in it. Uh, it's got a couple of things, uh, most notably the light. The BioOrb Air has six LED lights and they do have their own built-in timer function, but it's, uh, it's the kind where you plug it in and it kind of begins the cycle. And so you choose when it's active by when you plug it in. It does basically a 12 hours on and 12 hours off. It will kind of uh, ramp I don't think it ramps up, but it ramps down. Uh, so like the last half hour or so, uh, the, the lights will get gradually dimmer and dimmer until eventually they turn off. So that's a great plus for simplicity in the light and maybe a minus on the uh, a, a more granular approach that maybe you could get from an app or something like that. More on that later. The other defining feature on the lid of this terrarium is the mister. It's got a little fogger, basically, and it will atomize the uh, water inside and it'll bring it down and give it a nice, uh, nice misting if the humidity gets too low. It does sense the humidity is low and then adds it. I have yet to see it happen yet. <laughs> I've yet to see it happen on its own. Like uh, It's got a button on it and you can make it go whenever you want. And I have several times, but like I said, this is fairly new. This is fairly new. I've been in it a lot. I've added a lot of water to it, uh, trying to get to the, the water level to where it's supposed to be. So I don't know if it's particularly humid right now or it just doesn't come on very often. So maybe we'll wait and see. But that's a nice hands-off feature that apparently is controllable in a couple of different levels. It's got the one button in the back, and I guess you can use that to do uh, a couple of different things. I, for the most part, have just gone on the basic factory settings, just kind of the out-of-the-box settings, and haven't messed with any, uh, haven't adjusted anything yet. The other thing built into the top is a fan. Uh, what's super cool about the fan is it keeps this glass crystal clear, it keeps all the condensation away, and it circulates air for the plants. It apparently has three settings too. I have not changed uh, from the initial setting out of the box. If you put your ear right up to the top of it, you can hear it but it's a very, very quiet fan. Definitely, if you were gonna put this in a bedroom, say, or somewhere near your bed, this isn't the kind of thing that would keep you up at night at all. That atomizer that shoots out the mist at the top is apparently tied in with the lights, too, because when that reservoir gets low, the lights will dim, and then they'll get brighter again, and then they'll dim, and then they get brighter again. So it'll give you kind of a visual indication that you need to fill the water back up. I've been using RO water out of my Aquabear RO machine. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but recently I unboxed a little desktop RO machine. I've been using it both for the uh, for the Vision terrarium and now for this terrarium, and it's it's been really super handy to have around. It's also great for coffee and other stuff too. But it's a it's a really cool little desktop RO machine. It has a pretty good amount of space in here. I. I, I'm not sure what terrestrial plants maybe would be best. I guessed uh, I tried to get maybe some small scale plants <laughs> the best I could, but uh, I don't know where some of these will go or if I went with too many plants or too few plants. So I guess time will tell on how, uh, how well I picked. So it's got a tray, the capillary mat, and then the last half of this is, uh, is a reservoir for water. So in theory, you can fill this with water and then maybe several weeks will go by before you really need to do anything about it. Like, I don't know how often the mister goes. Like, I only had this going for, I think, about two weeks now. And um, this hasn't gotten close to empty. And this water seems like it's at the same spot it was when I first set it up. Or maybe the last time I added water. I went about a week at a certain level and decided maybe I should put more water in it. So it's hard for me to tell you uh, like how often you'd need to add water. But it has a cool drainage layer that kind of works with a capillary mat. The capillary mat's going to draw that water up into the, the base of that soil. So there'll always be kind of a little wet zone down at the bottom. And hopefully it just wicks that moisture straight into the roots and, uh, and keeps everything nice, nice and humidified and watered. I guess my final thoughts for this aquarium is one, uh, do be careful with the acrylic, it's very fragile. And uh, if you use wood like I did, you need to be super careful because one lot, like misstep with that and I could have really messed up this thing up. And uh, I'm gonna be, have to be very careful in the future that it doesn't accidentally like brush against the side at all. 
two moving forward as as uh, as Awaze starts to get more competition in this space. Right now, they don't have much competition in the smart terrarium space, but as they kind of move forward, I think they're gonna definitely have to include an app for a smartphone. This could give you better control of the, of the mist levels that you can adjust and the lighting, uh, especially the lighting. Uh, there are some people that maybe would want more than 12 hours. Some people might want less. Might be different intensities. That's another thing you can't really adjust is the intensity of the lights. I can understand why these initial units didn't have that because that's a uh, that's a that's a definitely the next frontier. But I am looking forward to seeing what they do in the future and to see if they start to incorporate even more things like that. This thing has been a real pleasure to have around, and my wife and I both sit and and, and look at it all the time. Uh, even the box we ended up having to keep because my cat liked it so much. <laughs> it now lives uh, in my living room. Uh, as another animal display, and sometimes my animal is on display there. Huge thank you to Awaze for like letting me try this and uh, just kind of showing what I can do with the terrarium. And it's a it's a bit of a step out, but you know I I enjoy nature, I enjoy plants and stuff, and a lot of the hopefully a lot of the stuff that I learned from keeping aquariums will kind of translate into maybe keeping good house plants. I initially thought about maybe getting some frogs or something to put in here, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it and kind of grow plants in it for a little while and see what I think. Yeah, I definitely don't want to commit to keeping another animal yet, especially it's something I, I've just just recently uh, set up. So I'm going to see how this what this is like, and then uh, once it gets all nice and mature, maybe I'll add something else in there to make it even more interesting. So that's all I have this week. Uh, I'll be back next week with some more videos. I'm not sure which video I'm going to do yet. So the the dirty tank is doing good. It's doing better each day, but I I don't know if I'll have that video ready or not. It's probably it's getting really long at this point. So it might end up it might end up being a two-parter. So maybe I'll just start doing it. I've got another tank that I want to redo. It's the uh, Fluval Spec 16, and I don't want to completely redo it, but I'm going to give a pretty good chopping and uh, and stuff. So I think that that might be interesting to watch. So I think next week we're going to redo the 16 gallon Fluval Spec. It is the last of my Fluval Specs that's still up. It barely even counts. It's basically it's a taller Evo, uh, the saltwater version that they made, but with a freshwater light. At the time, I used real high-tech substrate, too. It's got all the ADA substrate, and that was uh, kind of an experiment for that. So maybe we'll talk about that a little bit and how it's done. But that's all coming up next week. And until then, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank, terrarium, or whatever. <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.